Welcome back to my creative space. It's Nicole with Mainline Craft Company, where we make wreaths and crafts and have fun doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If so, please give me a thumbs up and comment below and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell to receive alerts each time we upload a new video. Any tools and supplies used for this project will be linked in the description below. So earlier this week, I received a last minute request from a customer to make her a fall wreath. So today in the shop, I will be making a rustic fall harvest Thanksgiving wreath using a grapevine base. And I have a lot of supplies on the table right now, as you can see. I haven't quite decided exactly what I will be using just yet. Um, it will definitely be a mix of everything that you see here. Um, so I'm just going to go with it and see what we come up with. So let's get started. So for the wreath base, we're going to be using an 18 inch grapevine. And the first thing I'm going to do is make the bow. So I'm using a two and a half inch ribbon and the ribbon that I use is always wired. And I'm going to measure out the tail at eight inches using my cutting mat. So go ahead and measure eight inches. You're going to pinch it and you're going to twist. So this is going to be a really simple bow. My loops are going to be 10 inches. So fold it in half and they're five inch loops. And I'm going to make five loops. So after you make your first loop, go ahead and pinch and then you're going to twist. Measure out another 10 inches. You're going to fold it in half, pinch. You're going to twist and you're going to do this three more times. Once you're done making your loops, go ahead and fluff out your bow. Measure the loops against each other to make sure they're the same height. You're going to grab a pipe cleaner or chenille stem, fold it in half, and you're going to tie your bow off using the chenille stem. So wrap it around. You're going to turn it to the back side, and then you're going to twist your bow. to tighten the chenille stem. And this is what you're going to use to secure the bow to the grapevine. Go ahead and fluff out your bow until you're happy with the way it looks. You're going to measure the second tail against the first one to make sure it's the same length. Go ahead and give it a cut. And the last step for the bow is we're going to fold the tails in half lengthwise and we're going to cut it at a diagonal and what this will do is it will dovetail the ends to kind of finish it off uh, to make it look a little bit more polished. Go ahead and fluff your bow out some more. I probably play with my bows too much. Um, I will definitely fluff my bow out more during this process. So to attach the bow to the grapevine, you're going to take the chenille stems and you're going to poke them through the grapevine wherever you want the bow to be placed. So in this case, I'm going to place the bow at the bottom of the wreath. Poke in the chenille stems through, and then once you get them through, flip your grapevine over, grab the two chenille stems, and twist them together so that it's nice and secure. Clip off any of the chenille stems if they're too long using some wire cutters and 
we're going to fold the tip of the chenille stem back into the wreath to hide it. Go ahead and flip your wreath back over and give your bow another fluff. So this is how my bow turned out. You can make yours with more loops, less loops, bigger, smaller. I uh, chose the size because I thought it was perfect for what I was going to be adding to the wreath. Next thing I'm going to do is add some fall picks. So I have some garland here that has some picks attached to it, just some little mini pumpkins and some leaves. You could basically add the garland or tie the garland to the grapevine, but I decided to remove all the picks from the garland and stick them directly in to the grapevine. I like the way that it looks and I can bend and twist the picks the way that I like it. So now that I've removed all the picks from the garland, I'm going to go ahead and bend them a little bit, uh, each of the picks, so that they have more of a natural look to them. Kind of bend each of the stems, and, um, and then I'm going to place them in the wreath to see where I want them to go before I glue them in. I have about 10 to 12 picks um, that I pulled off of the garland. So I'm just going to place them around the wreath on the top, on the inner part of the ring, and on the outer part of the ring. And I just want it to look uniform all throughout. So I'm done placing my picks and I like the placement of them. The next step is to glue them in. So what I like to use, uh, especially when I'm putting together a grapevine wreath and I know I'm going to be gluing a lot of picks or stems into a grapevine, is I like to use my glue pot or glue skillet. Um, it comes in so handy. I love it. It makes it so much easier. Um, so I'm going to use that and I'm basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove each pick one at a time, dab it in the glue, and then I'm going to put it back in the wreath where it was.
So the customer that I'm making this wreath for, she's absolutely wonderful. She's a repeat customer. Um, and she's giving me full range to just be creative with this wreath and design it however I choose. And so one of the things that I find that is most fun about making this wreath is I'm challenging myself to design it with materials that I already have on hand. The only thing that I had to buy was the grapevine wreath itself, but everything else I already had in my stash. So the next thing that I'm going to add are these flowers. They're like a burnt orange copper color. And basically what I'm doing is I'm trimming off the stem so that it leaves about an inch and a half to two inches. And I'm gonna dip it in hot glue and just place them all throughout the wreath. So there really is no rhyme or reason to how and what I'm adding to the wreath. Um, just picking some stuff that I think would look really nice and just going along with it. So I found some really pretty leaves, um, some fall leaves. They're different colors. I have some reds and some orange, gold, um, green, some with magenta, and some of the leaves even have some glitter on it. I also have some pine cones, different pine cones, mini pine cones. Some are plain and some are spray painted with different colors and some have glitter on it. So I think I'm going to add the pine cones next. They don't have a stem, but all I'm going to do is use my hot glue gun, add some glue to the bottom and just glue them onto the wreath. So I think now is a good time to add the leaves to my wreath. So I'm just going to use a variety of different colors and textures. And the way that I like to use leaves is to add them around the outer edge and the inner ring. Um, leaves add so much depth and they're really pretty. Uh, they just add another layer to the wreath and they're really great filler flowers or filler greenery, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just take the leaves, place them in different areas of the wreath, similar to what I did with the garland picks. And once I have them in places that I like, I will go ahead and glue them in. So you'll notice that I'm using a variety of different leaves. Uh, some of them are single leaves that I'll stick in to the wreath. And there are some that have three to four leaves to one stem. And so I like to add those in as well. Another tool that has definitely made life easier is a steel pick machine or a stemming machine. Uh, basically, what it does is it adds a metal pick. It presses a metal pick onto the end of a stem. It could be, in this case, the stem of the leaf. It could be a flower. Um, just, just about anything that you want to add stability to so that you can stick it inside of the grapevine. And so in this case, the leaves that I'm using the stem is not strong enough to add glue and stick into the wreath. So I'm adding a steel pick to the end of it, adding the glue, and now I'm able to insert it into the wreath without it bending. And it, it also adds another layer of attachment so it's secure into the wreath. 
So I'm just going to finish adding the leaves to the wreath by adding a metal pick to the stem, um, dabbing some hot glue on it, and securing it to the wreath. So now I'm going to start adding in more flowers. So here I have some olive green flowers. After that I'm going to use some filler flowers which are like a rust brown color. I have some berries that I'm going to add in that are in different fall colors and then I'm going to finish gluing in the rest of the leaves that I have placed in the wreath. So here's what we have so far. One of the things I like to do when making grapevine wreaths, especially if it's a full coverage wreath, is I like to cover the entire base with just different uh, florals, filler flowers, greenery, leaves, texture, love to add texture. Um, so the next thing I'm going to add is some wheat different colors actually looks pretty cool. So after I was done adding in the wheat and the different colored fall grass, I decided that I was going to remove the orange colored grass with the white colored wheat. I just didn't like the way that it looked on the wreath. It just wasn't working for me. Um, so I took those out, which, you know, is fine because that's just what you need to do. Sometimes you gather materials that you are going to use but you know after you add them in you may decide that you don't like the way it looks so it's okay to remove and add other items there really is no right or wrong here it's basically what what you like what looks good to you and what will look good to your customer so a wreath just isn't a fall wreath until you've added pumpkins. So in the next step, I'm going to add some pumpkins and some pine cones. My pumpkins are different shapes and sizes and different colors and textures. So to add the pumpkins and the pine cones, I'm just going to add some hot glue to them and glue them directly onto the grapevine.
so I have some berries that I thought would look really pretty in the wreath. I thought it would just create more texture again, more depth. So the berries that I have are white and red, and I'm just going to find some holes and add some glue and plug in my berries. So the very last thing that I'm going to add to my wreath is um, more leaves. There are just are a few more holes. I'd like it to look more balanced and more even on both sides of the bow. Um, and I have quite a few leaves left in the perfect colors that match. So I'm just gonna plug a few in with some glue, fill the holes and and then I'll be done. So here's how the wreath turned out. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments below. I really am pretty proud of how this wreath turned out considering that all of the materials with the exception of the grapevine came directly out of my stash. I love the colors, the textures, the depth. It just has a little bit of everything. And I feel like it's not crowded at all. It still has an airy flow to it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this wreath turned out. And I think my customer will be really pleased with it also. Here are some close-ups of the wreath. So one of the very last things that I like to do to a grapevine wreath is clean up the back. And this is something that I learned a few years ago by watching and following Julie Samako with Southern Charm Wreaths. Um, I, I've been watching her and following her for quite some time. And this is one of the things that she teaches and that she does. And not everyone does this, but I find that it it really finishes off the wreath and makes it um, personable to the customer and is very considerate because when you when you make items using a grapevine wreath, you know you use the steel picks or even some of the picks that poke through the grapevine. They poke through the back of the wreath. You definitely don't want to give this to a customer knowing that they're going to hang it on their front door, on a wall, some place where it could end up scratching the surface. So I do like to take it one step further. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to flip the wreath over. And as you can see, there are some steel picks that are poking through the back and some of the stems from some of the items that are sticking through the back. Definitely do not want to send that to a customer or give that to a customer. You know, it, it really could damage the surface when they hang it. So I'm going to use 
my wire cutters, I'm going to trim off anything that is sticking out through the back. And then we're going to cover up the mechanics of how the wreath is put together. You know, it doesn't have to look amazing on the back, but we want to finish it off just to kind of hide it. We're going to add some leftover leaves and greenery from previous um, bunches of florals that I've collected. And that's another good use to putting some of the supplies that you have, you know, instead of throwing them away. So I did trim anything poking through the back. However, it still looks kind of ugly to me. So I'm going to cover it up with the greenery, with the leaves, anything that I have. I'm going to hot glue it to the back of the wreath. And the other thing that that does is it not only hides the mechanics and makes it look nicer, it gives it a second a layer of protection. So when it's hanging on a front door, when it's hanging on a wall, any type of surface, it will not scratch because those leaves are made of cloth and it's something soft. It's another layer in between the surface and the back of the grapevine. I really think my customers appreciate it. They appreciate the thought uh, that goes into making these wreaths. So this is what the back of the wreath looks like when we're all finished. Definitely looks better than it did before. And again, this is an optional step, but something that I choose to do depending on how the back of the wreath looks. So flip your wreath back over, fluff out your bow, fluff out your picks, just move some stuff around, take one last look at it, and I think I will have a very happy customer. I truly enjoy making wreaths, decorating my home, especially around the holidays, crafting, DIYing. So I, my hope is that you found inspiration in this video and in what I've made so that you will too be creative and create wreaths and decorate your home for the holidays. So thank you guys for being here with me. Again, this is Nicole with Roads Handmade, formerly Mainland Craft Co., uh, where we make wreaths and crafts and teach you how to make them. Please, please uh, comment below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive alerts the next time we upload a, a new video. You guys all... I really hope you enjoy this video and thank you so much for being here. Have a blessed day.